evening, folks, and welcome to Rosendale Village. Takes a look at Boston Arts. My name is Glenn Williams. I'm your host. And to my left and to your right is the super producer, Janice Williams. Hi, Jan. Good evening. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Pretty well, thanks. Hanging in there. It's, uh, it's another beautiful Monday. Mm -hmm. Here we are again. It's getting towards, can you believe it's already towards the end of March? Already? Oh, it's going by much too fast, much too fast. I couldn't remember. I couldn't believe it when uh, you told me Easter was uh, the 4th. <laughs> You're even moving that up this year. <laughs> Yeah, it's going really fast. It's uh, mm -hmm. we're uh, we're looking forward to. We have a great show tonight. Uh, we're I say it every week. We're always experimenting and trying something different. Uh, we're going to have two great guests on this evening. Uh, Nancy Levy's going to come on. Excuse my back. I'm sorry. And she is going to talk about professional coaching, mm -hmm. uh, um, helping people along with their businesses and. Um, it's um, becoming quite popular. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, a lot of people that are entrepreneurs, a lot of people are going out on their own, right. and um, <clears throat> it's a wonderful um, group that has, um, they have a whole uh, organization behind them nationwide that mm -hmm. um, just helps people to go that next step to, to keep motivated. It's great. Well, just by She'll be able to explain it a lot better than I can. Well, just by thumbing through the press release I got here on, on, on Nancy, she's, she's one of the best around, I guess, so it's going to be nice to have her on. We'll talk about that. And also, my good bud, Elliot Herrera, is going to be on. And uh, Elliot's in the... Uh, a treat. It, it is a treat. It's great to be able to get him on here. He's, uh, he's the Herrera of Casey Williams and Herrera. And I think we're even going to be able to coax him into playing a little bit. That'd be great. We uh, never have enough musicians on. Never enough musicians. Well, that's one of the things you said to me. We, 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 through the year and a half we've been here, we've had all kinds of artists and educators, painters, uh, sculptors. And then, you know, you, you, you'd often say... Hey, Glenn, how come we don't have enough musicians? Well, we're going to have one of the best around on tonight, and he's going to talk a little bit about what, what, what his kind of music, what he's doing musically, and, uh, and he's going to play a little bit for us, and it's going, to be, it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. So what's going on? What did you do? Did you do anything artful this I year? most certainly did. You did. I went and saw the uh, Boston Ballet on Saturday evening uh, with my mother at Very the Wang nice. Center. Very nice. And, uh, That's a nice room. It is a very nice room. Uh, so my mother hadn't been in there since she, she was trying to remember if it was a movie theater years ago. <laughs> and uh, so we have to look that up and find out a little bit of history of the yeah. Wang Theater. Sure. Um, but she was very uh, excited to be there and because uh, it's very magnificent oh, it's inside. Cool. Yeah. And, um, well, we went with the fabulous one, didn't Fabulous Rebecca and I? Mm -hmm. Didn't you go? Mm -hmm. we saw her. And of course, you know, it's it's uh, quite changed. They, you know, in the lobby you can have drinks. Mm -hmm. and and get food, and they even sell things in there. As a yep. matter of fact, did you notice they had a whole array of um, musical pins? Yes, I did see that. Yeah, I was looking at that. Maybe when little, is my birthday? Little coming? birthday <laughs> present there, maybe. Um, so, but it was uh, quite crowded, and uh, it was great. It was. What um, did you see? What was it? Balanchine, um, which Balanchine. is yeah, she's the cho choreographer. Oh, I see. So um, it's like three sets of of just absolutely magnificent um, dance routines, and. Um, the, um, they dance like for 45 minutes at a time. And uh, you just afterwards you say, how can they dance that long and so precise and so beautifully, you know? They do a lot of push-ups. You know? And then there's a 15 minute intermission and they're back out there again, right. you know, doing a, a different, totally different routine. It's really fabulous. I want to remind everybody that this is the Answer Channel and the number is 973-4848. The fabulous Rebecca is in there answering the phones. I understand we have a phone call. Is Michael, Michael's on the phone. Hello, Mike. Hi, how are you today? Hi, Michael, how are you? Good, I just jumped through the channel uh, before hitting the news and saw you guys. And I get to watch uh, the Rosendale Village Station every so often. Oh, well, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. I just want to make a comment. I'm from Rosendale myself, and I grew up in the area. Uh, I miss your coffee shop. That's the first thing I wanted oh, to say. Oh, thanks. We do, too. Believe me. Listen, but, uh, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people that don't live in Rosendale and stuff like that, and how they hear Rosendale Village is coming around so much. And just people don't appreciate it, like yourself, a lot of the people that are on the committees and stuff, and the... Uh, for the businesses, how much time they involved, and they've really, I mean, a lot of residents uh, don't say it, but from Rosendale, they, they understand that it's a lot of volunteer work, bringing the arts to Rosendale, well, the and the committee, and for the village, and making decisions like whether to have a, a large chain store in or not, and this and that, and, and it's really important. It really is. You know, Michael, we're really lucky because in Rosendale, the volunteerism is huge. We have a lot of people that dedicate themselves to the square, not only the square area, but Rosendale in general. Uh, you've got uh, several different committees, obviously the Rosendale Village Main Street, 
is, is one of the one of the main things that, that's helping revitalize the the uh, the uh, market area down the square. But also a healthy Rosendale Coalition. You've got the Greater Rosendale Arts Association. We're really lucky in Rosendale to have all these people donating their time, and and, and to make it a better community for all of us. I mean, I, I was at the playground up in West Rosendale, and, and I met a woman named Lisa with a. And, and uh, I wish I could donate like a lot of time, but I got like three young kids, and mm -hmm. and I tell the people who are able to, and it's just trying to show you appreciation. But she was from JP, mm -hmm. and she moved to Rosendale, and she couldn't believe she's like Rosendale is a hot spot right now. I mean, <laughs> and she thought it was great, and even she was talking about how the, the volunteerness for people that are helping to change the village and Rosendale around. And I don't mean we're trying to make it; it's trying to be made out to be the new yuppie center or this or that no. or whatever. But I mean. It's just um, people really take care, and and, uh, and I just want I'm I wanted to say thanks to you guys even spending time on the show Thank for the you. Rosendale, you know, bringing art to Rosendale, and and it's just fabulous. It really is. I don't think enough appreciation gets shown, but a lot of people do talk about it, though. We appreciate that, Michael. I really do. Uh, thanks for the phone call. That's really nice. Thank, Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Be safe. Okay. Well, that's nice to hear. Nice. You, you don't hear that very often. That's nice. Thank you, Mike. Um, but it's true. There's the volunteerism in Rosendale just is, is enormous, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and we do appreciate all them people that that do what they do. By the time well, I think we talked it. about it how when we first came to Rosendale um, from Quincy, you know, you, you started getting involved in, in yep. things that were going on in the community. When you lived there, your mother was very involved. Oh, very much so. Um, yeah. And I remember at the time thinking, what is he getting us into here, you know? <laughs> and, um, but now I embrace it because I've seen, you know, how it's changed the quality of our life in Rosendale sure. and has helped other people. So, That's great. Um, and the nice people that we work alongside with. Oh, that, yeah. well, they're, they're very important. What's happening in Rosendale? Is anything happening? Well, first I want to hear what awful thing you did last week. You know, speaking of volunteers, Kurt and ARC is, is uh, we went out and, and, uh, and worked on some uh, c uh, conceptual uh, films for some of our CD work, some of our music. So we actually went out and filmed the, um, I guess it's the acting, I guess, uh, about walking around the streets of Rosendale and Boston and Roxbury and, and singing to the songs and pretending we're playing and the people are riding by looking at us. So you're doing like an MTV thing. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I guess they're music <laughs> videos. I guess mm -hmm. they would be, and they're going to be packaged up in the CD that we're going to we're going to try and get in every it in every like household out there. <laughs> it sounds like fun, but I heard you were in the cemetery. Well, we we went to St. Michael's Cemetery, right, Elliot? Yeah, and we walked. Uh, we did qu some quick shots in there because it was pointing to the, one of the songs that we're doing, and. Um, it was very interesting. We had a good time doing it. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Do you yeah. think? Do you think I'll ever get into one of your videos? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But it was a nice try because <laughs> trap me in front of all these people. That's not going to happen. Uh, well, you know, consider it. You know, I have all this experience. So, Maybe you know, we don't know. We'll I can't sing, but you know, we'll see. I can pretend. <laughs> like we were pretending. <laughs> uh, yes, we will. But that's what I did, and and. and I tell everybody at the end of the show, do something awful. Well, we'll live in it. Well, that's great. Yeah. And I understand there was a um, very nice dance at Sacred Heart on Friday night. Yes, it was. The, uh, we had the semi-formal for the junior high kids. Mm -hmm. It was so cute. I'll tell you, it's not cute, beautiful. The fabulous one was there. And um, it was great because you could tell that the, uh, the young ladies Worked on it hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they all dressed up to the nines. I nine spent the afternoon with some of them, and they were so excited. <laughs> uh, just very excited about going. All the to women the were very, very beautiful, up. and some of the young men were very handsome and dressed up. Some of them cut the dress code as close as they could to no sneakers and dungarees, but they were, they fulfilled the requirement and came in, and the kids had a blast. They had the conga line going the whole McGiller. It was dynamic. That's great. A lot of fun. I love to see kids having well, that's there. fun like that. Yeah, you that's know. part of it. So, um, Speaking of volunteers, uh, yeah. I'd like to mention, um, you know, our sponsors' uh, event that they're going to have, Abby, Abby Davis, Davis from nice. Innovative Moves, yeah. um, the Movers and Shakers um, Society, of which I'm a member. <laughs> I was going to say, who's on <laughs> um, that committee? <laughs> but they're, they're putting together a event called Spring Fling, where they're going to honor 11 um, volunteers from the area, mm -hmm. uh, give them a um, donation that they are going to give to a charity of yep. their choice. Um, Anyone from our neck of the woods we might know? Kathy Slade. Kathy Slade. For her work with the, the um, youth of the Rosendale. Youth of Rosendale. Uh, Helen Hummel for yep. her work with the arts. That's great. And uh, a lot of uh, 
people from JP are going like to get Like I said, it originated in Jamaica Plain, mm -hmm. and now, obviously, since he's moved over to down on Corinth Street in Rosie Square, he um, wants to get from Bob Rosendale, Rosendale, which is Bob. Nice. Yeah. And it was, you know, we, we talked about it was hard because um, there was a long, long list of, of volunteers mm -hmm. um, that were, you know, selected, Aren't you lucky to nominated. have that kind of list yeah. of people that pull really, from? That's really. nice. So it, the event is uh, April 17th. It's called Swing Into, Sp into Spring. It's going to be a dinner dance with a um, swing band. 22 Herbs Heard. Herbs Heard. Herbs Heard. It's called. And um, the event, the money from, that will be raised from the tickets at the event will be donated to a literacy program in Jamaica Plain. That's so it's, great. I mean, it's a win-win situation. No They're going to honor the um, volunteers mm -hmm. and at the same time uh, raise money for a worthy come down, cause. Come on down and, and have a good time. Do it. They have a dance. Uh, uh, Super producer Janice and I'll be there. I'll give you a dance if you want. I'll dance with you if you come on down. What do you think of that? Huh? Well, I'll fall over anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can get information about it by um, calling uh, Innovative Moves or at the Artful Gift website right. um, and just click on to Swing Into Spring right. and um, you'll, you'll find it. So what else wanted is to mention happening? that. I'd like to mention um, Alona Ricardo, who was our guest last week, yes. who um, is the actress who puts on the is putting on the upcoming Classics Alive uh, at the Lyric Stage at the YWCA. Uh, you can order tickets by calling Gate Corporation mm -hmm. at 617-323-1227. Um, and okay. those events will be going on, um, what's it, next weekend? March next, 20, next weekend. 28th, 29th, and 30th. You can also find, the, find them on the uh, Artful Gift website, Yeah, too. Classics Alive. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's... Yeah. We wanted to mention that so that uh, people don't miss that because yes. he's only there for three days and uh, it's a wonderful show. What else is going on? We've got to move quickly. Okay. You want me to uh, keep moving? It's the Easter <coughs> egg hunt, April 3rd, 10 o'clock. Come come see the Easter Bunny. Uh, get do some ra Go in some races. Win races. Some, win There'll some, be some music uh, and all of the notables will be down there making their speeches. The mayor will be the there. The mayor will be by. And um, the auction. The 22nd. 22nd. Of... April. April. Yep. Um, Main Street Auction. It's going to be up on the Elks in West Roxbury. Get your tickets down at Main Street. And anybody that's interested in entering their recipes in the Sacred Heart Cook-Off, you need to get them in soon because yes. uh, it's filling up really fast. We can only take the first 80 people that Imagine sign up. Imagine that 80 contestants. You have 60 judges. And, this um, is going to be huge oh again. Yeah, it's they can't great. stop. All you can eat. Five dollars. How can you miss it? Unbelievable. And Senator Marion Walsh is going to be the master of ceremonies. It's going to be great. Okay, there's one more thing. Oh. Um, the Copley Society at 158 Newbury Street, um, they're going to be having an exhibit coming up in April called The Big Dig, an Artist Perspective. And they, nine of the artists from the society have been going down into the bowels of the Big Dig and um, doing photographs, doing paintings. Um, I'd like to see that. You know. right. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a really interesting exhibit, and that's going to be there uh, from April 15th to May 8th. Cool. So I just want to alert people to that so they can put it on their schedule. Cool. Well, thanks, Jan. You're welcome. Sorry to shove you out of here so quickly. It was a we've quick got one. The, we've got these great guests we've got to get to. But in the meantime, what I want you to do is I want to show you how to get in touch with us. We're at Rosendale Village Main Street, and I'm Glenn Williams at 99 Belgrade Avenue in Rosendale, Mass., 02131, if you want to write me a letter. And uh, my email address is gaw4bass at aol.com. And there's that Artful Gift website. And I need to thank our great sponsors again, Avi Davis and the gang down at Innovative Moves. They're down on uh, Center Street in Jamaica Plain. And they're also now down in, in uh, Rosendale Square on Corinth Street. You can see them down there. And, of course, Gate Corporation up there at... Uh, Hello. Oh. Up there at, uh, on, Wa on, Bel on Belgrade Avenue in West Roxbury and Hocus Pocus through the magic of TV. Here we are. Hi, Nancy. How are you? I'm great. Hey, thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. My pleasure. Um, like I said, Nancy L Levy. That's correct. Yes, is a uh, professional coach. What do you call the business that you're doing? Now? Is it's called the Coaching Collaborative. Okay. And I work in collaboration with six other coaches. Oh, okay. I see. So I have my own private practice and then... We, as a collaborative, are actually looking at putting together what we call playback theater okay. and doing some theater things in corporations. Okay. Yeah, so very see, innovative. Let me see if I've got it right now. I, I, let's say, for instance, for, for me, for instance, I'm a musician and I, right. and I, and I want to promote myself or get people to or know how to, con how to 
run my business better, would it be? Or mm -hmm. would it be how to... Um, well, there it's not are, so much live my life, is it, as, as it is Well, we get into some life issues you? Okay. sometimes, yeah. Um, the kinds of people I work with mm -hmm. that, in the arts, because I know this is an art show, so I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about okay, artists, sure. uh, are people who want to have their, their work published. For mm -hmm. example, I've worked with a couple of writers. Okay. And to do that, it's a lot about creating space in their lives so that they have time to do the work that they need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, being relentless as far as looking for an agent, if that's what they want to do. I convinced one of my clients to publish on the internet. Okay. She, she was looking for a publisher. She was you know, going through the, the very traditional way of, of getting a book published. And I read her manuscript and I thought it was great and no one was you know, biting at it. And mm -hmm. I said, self-publish, put it on the internet. Right. So she's developing a following that way. It, that, that's very interesting because I, I guess what I run into, and, mm -hmm. I, and I talk to a lot of artists, and I talk to a lot of musicians, is they, they have this, they're very good at their craft. Right. And, and you, you made a good point. It's, like, it's almost like breathing to them because That's it, right. it's so natural because it is a gift. Mm -hmm. you know? yep. I mean, you can, I've met musicians that are nothing but, they're, 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 they're school taught, taught, and they work at it and work at it mm -hmm. and work at it. And then you hear somebody who's just, and that just naturally that's right. has that flow, and there's definitely the difference. But the people that have this natural flow, and they just, I find it hard to say, come look at me, you know? The self-promotional self thing. Do you help, do you, do you help yeah, getting, I do. getting someone over that fear? Or, or and I've, I've also referred some people to our uh, super producer, Janice Williams. <laughs> <laughs> <That'll>, <laughs> and in her other life. That'll do it. That'll yes. do it. In one of her other lives. Yes. yes. Um, I am not an expert in every area mm -hmm. so when it comes to someone that needs promotional kinds of materials then i refer that individual to someone like oh, janice so you have a stable of people that you work exactly. with exactly you can refer to right. have a large referral right group. and what i find with a lot of um, artists and it's true for everyone is that we listen to a lot of voices you know we hear what our mothers told us. Mm -hmm. We hear what our school teacher in the fifth grade told us. Right. We hear what our friends suggest that we do. And it's in, amid all of those other conversations, we, there's also what we really love to do. Yeah. So it's kind of separating out, you know, getting rid of some of those, those, that chatter in order to really find what's, what's important to you. Because very often, it, you know, it's like, well, well, gee, I want to be an artist, but I have to do it a certain way because so-and-so said I have to do it that way. Or I shouldn't be an artist. I sh it should be an avocation. Okay. So you're not a manager? No, no. So I, I wouldn't come to you and say, here's my CD. Make it, make it good. Right. No, I'm not the person for that. Okay. And you're the person to make me go in the right direction as far as where yeah, I want to go? I might go? say to you, you know, what have, tell me where you want to go and let's work out a way for you to get there. Okay. And I'll ask you some things that probably seem very extraneous to the original conversation about where you are and where you want to be. Okay. I might ask you, what does your house look like? Okay. What is your apartment like? Okay. You know, do you have to climb over things to get to your desk? Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, 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 don't go there. <laughs> I can hear them all day. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A very unorganized. Uh -huh. You know, so uh, and it's, uh, it would, it, in order to get ahead or to move in the right direction, mm -hmm. organization, I suppose, is one organization of the Organization is part of it, but it, a lot of it is that there's a lot of, we, sometimes we have a lot of clutter in our life that we need to just to clean up okay. in order to, it gives us energy. When you climb over things to get to your desk every day, it takes its toll. Okay. It robs you of energy because you look at those piles and you go, oh, I should be cleaning that up. All right. You know? I don't have, the, I'll do it this weekend. And then this weekend comes and goes, and then, you know, so it, it drains you. Mm -hmm. well, I've got a room that's draining me right now, just sitting here thinking about it. <laughs> that's why I think it's a good idea for people to move every now and then. <laughs> yeah, another area, in addition to just kind of cleaning up your physical spaces, uh, when was the last time you had your, you know, physical checkup? No. When was the last time you went to the dentist? All those kinds of things rob us, rob us of energy. So you're going to work with the individual. You're going to work with the person. Right. Instead of necessarily what I've got, you're going to work with me to get myself prepared for that move. 
Right. Ah, it's, it's like, that's it's, a lot like it's, it's like working with a personal trainer, getting wow. your body into shape. It's getting you into shape okay. so that you're ready to tackle anything. Okay. And I also have certain areas of expertise. For example, networking is mm. something that I talk about. I do seminars, I've given presentations, I facilitate groups, and I talk a lot about networking. So that's something that I, I really love. I also talk about business because I'm entrepreneurial down to my toenails. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. And um, because of that, I'm very creative, and I tend to attract very attract you know, very attractive attractive and creative people. You would be someone to hang about with, wouldn't exactly. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have most of my clients are extremely creative. Okay. Now, do you work? Uh, would you? Um, would you come to a, a group and, and, and give them a speech, or give them a talk mm -hmm. on motivation? Or yeah, I've done that. Do so you do the Patino thing? Where I you do a little bit of Rick Patino. Okay, yeah. 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 We're very talking about sports coaching yeah. versus personal or business coaching, and really okay. they're very analogous. Because yeah. the, the coach, you don't want the coach to play the game. You right. don't want Rick Patino in there playing forward. No, you if don't. If you've seen Rick Patino standing next to one of his players, he comes back to their belt. You know? Exactly. You want him on the sidelines. That's his value. Okay. And the same is true for a business coach or a personal coach. Okay. You can see things because you have that perspective. You're not in the person's life. You can see things. And there's a certain amount of objectivity as well because a family member has an agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a certain, you know, outcome that they want. Right, it would I be difficult to turn to, I, I guess, even your, even your buddies and stuff, I guess, you know, it's hard to turn to somebody that's close and attached right. to you yep. for advice career-wise, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is better to get an outside, I that other so. eye. Yeah, yeah. How's I, it going? It's great. I is love it? it. I love you what do. I You do. must love what you do. I adore it. The, what's so valuable to me that, I, that just lights me up is that I get to talk to people about what's really important to them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about, you know, the sale at... Filene's or Macy's or whatever. It's really, you know, or what's the weather. I mean, that's a, a lot of people spend a lot of time talking about the weather. People call me and they're telling me about what's in their heart, what's really, really, really important to mm -hmm. them. And that's, in, well, then that's what, what they have to come to is a piece with that. Right. In order to move ahead. They, yeah, they have to be ready to make that leap. It's a difficult leap, isn't it? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. And some people take baby steps. You yeah. know, and other people take leaps. It, it, everyone's different, and that's what's so fascinating too. Every person I work with is completely different. So it's a different day at the at the job site. It's not just going every, and doing something. Every coaching call, and I work over the telephone, is a whole different ball game. Uh huh. Oh, so you do a lot of work over the phone. I do. Okay, and. Um, I guess that's some. I can't say who you're working with now. What kind of people are you dealing with now? I work with artists. I work with. Attorneys. I have a lot of attorneys oh, do I work with. Yeah. I like attorneys. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> you planning most on some? <laughs> most people, when I say that, they just go, huh? Well, I know a couple of attorneys, and I like them, too. There are a lot of great folks out there. Some that are, you know, it's like any other profession. There's yeah. some really great people, and there's sure. some people who you wouldn't necessarily uh, want to hang out with. Sure. Well, let's talk about, let's, let's just because I know about it a little yeah, bit, let's, yeah. let's, let's kind of focus on the, uh, on the artist. What kind of calls are you going to get from an artist? Because one of the things that I know is, mm -hmm. is that it, being involved with the Art Association, we have all these artists who are fantastic artists right. who there's stuff that gets any further than their right. seller. Well, I, I think and they don't even call it a studio yet. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. it's, it's like if they don't even, haven't even gotten to the point where they can feel comfortable enough to call it a studio. I think a little bit has to do with what we talked about a few minutes ago, and that is that for an artist, creating is like breathing. Mm. It's like can't not create. And they, because it comes so naturally and it's so much a part of who they are, they don't realize that it has value outside of their own creative process. Right. And I think very often it's difficult for the artist then to take that next step and realize that it does have value and that there's a market. Okay. But very often that's why people in the arts have some, you know, a business type of person behind them because it's just a whole other world. It is. I know it, I, it, it would be for me. I mean, I wouldn't know, you know, once the song is written and recorded, right. I'm happy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Exactly. You're fulfilled. Yeah. You're, you're self-expressed. But but then inevitably it gets to where well I want someone else to hear it. 
and right. it gets as far as the wish with me because mm -hmm. then I don't you know you don't know what to do you know you know you don't want to I, I don't you know I, I I can't walk up and say you got to hear this this is mm -hmm. great so I've got to get over I've got to get past that or if you can't if it's really difficult for you find someone who can right, represent yeah. you mm. and the other piece that I think is important for artists to understand is that very often someone will come along and say, Glenn, I can market this for you. Yeah. And then you go, <laughs> exactly. take it, you know, <laughs> take it and run, <laughs> and you, you move on. Yeah. And a lot of artists get into trouble, get, you know, I think a lot of us have heard stories about managers who were being sued because they took horror the money in horror, horror shows. shows. Yeah. And that is because I think the artist isn't being responsible. It's not that they are a marketer and should be doing the marketing or should be the business person, but they need to know a little bit. Of, they have to educate themselves a little bit about it yeah. to be responsible so that at least they're, they're speaking the same language, that they're not abdicating. Yeah. Because then it's, it's, you know, then you hear those horror stories. So it's, 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 it's so a So staying away from the dolls, why are you about it, guys? Exactly, yeah. exactly. You want to know. You want to look at, you know, what plan they've come up with, who they're talking to, what percentages. Now, is it strictly, are you, would you strictly be involved in, in just someone involved in money-making ventures? Or would you also be involved in a non-profit, let's say, mm -hmm. let's say the Art Association mm -hmm. or Main Street or something like that, wanted, sure. needed somebody to coach them through uh, Absolutely. getting something Absolutely. together. So you could work with a group as well? Absolutely. It's, it's, I'm not limited in that regard. It really is where do you or the group where are you now? Where do you want to go? How do we close the gap? Mm -hmm. That's what it really what it's about. So there's brainstorming. It's brainstorming. It's creating a plan. It's creating an action plan so that having a plan, but then, then what do you do? You know, it's like Pac-Man, you know, little bites. Yep. Sometimes when you say, oh, I want to get that CD marketed, it seems overwhelming. It's like, where do you begin? Yeah. So with a coach, what I do a lot of times is just like, let's back up. Let's, let's look, where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in six months? Where do you want to be in three months? How do we start? Where do we begin? You know, making some calls, whatever it is, mm -hmm. getting into action. And then if you start to build momentum. And part of my job, too, is to remind people of how far they've come. Yes, congratulations. Exactly. It's very important, isn't it's it? It's very important. Very often we get so caught up in how much more we have to do yeah. that we forget how far we've come. So see, now that would be my problem. I, I would see the mountaintop instead of seeing where the valley I've exactly. left. Exactly. Right. And the, the value of climbing that mountain is the higher you get, the better the vistas. <laughs> you know, very the nice. more you can see. Um, I see you've, had some, you've done some traveling. Yes, I have. You did some... Uh, some time over in Africa? Yes, I lived in Kenya with my family for two years. What was that like? It was fabulous. How long ago was that? 1987 to 1989. Was it cool, huh? It was wonderful. It was probably the single best experience of my life as far as the family mm -hmm. that we've had. Yeah, it was just wonderful. That's neat. Do you work with, with other families? I don't necessarily work with families, although I... I'm very creative, so I have a lot of lot of different interests, and one of them is teenagers. Okay. And I do a program at uh, really element not elementary school, but middle schools, right before kids are ready to go off to high school, with parents. That's oh, you great do. Fun. Yeah. Oh, we've got to talk because the, <laughs> a group that I belong to are in Rosendale, uh -huh. the Rosie Reps, uh, we find that, that there's an age group of kids, 11 to 15. Too old for, for after right. school programs, too young to work up at Roach Brothers, you mm -hmm. know, in that, that in between. In between. They're too old to play Little League. Mm -hmm. not, you know, everyone doesn't play basketball. That's right. Not everyone is into sports. Right. So, and we're working, trying to get things for these, for that age group and that group of kids to do. It's been a long battle. But Kathy Slay, we mentioned earlier, and she is really, really involved That's in it. That's wonderful. She's doing some great That's stuff. That's wonderful. I'd love to talk with you about yes, that. Yes, because I think one of the things we would like to do is we have a, we have a speak uh, a speak out where we invite the kids to come. I'd love to get the parents to come, you know, and, and to get them into into an area and say, look, we, we sent out a questionnaire. We asked them what they wanted. Mm -hmm. what are the, to the, the, the children, to the kids to or the to the parents? To the parents of the 11 to 12-year-olds. Mm -hmm. 
how does your kid get to the Y? How does your, what, what's not in the neighborhood? Right. And some of the responses we're getting have been fabulous. I mean, we've got a 20% return. That's very good. Which is very, very good. You that's know, excellent. We sit there and we well, we only go 20% back, and then we compare it to some other questionnaires that have gone out, and that's a great response. That's a very good response. So you hit a, you must have, you know, Stuck a note. hit a hot button. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Oh. I want to remind everybody that it is the answer channel 973-4848. They tell me to do that before I introduce the call. I it's, see. It's kind of like a way to go. That's kind of works. That's good. Works, That's, good. It? That's good. Young, we have Gary out there. Hi, Gary. You out there? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you both? Fine, thanks. Thanks for calling the answer channel. What can I do for you? Oh, yes. Um, I love art. And, um, you know, I go down to Roslindale quite a bit. Uh-huh. Um, I, 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 I just heard it on a... Could you catch me up a bit of what you've been talking about? Um, I I go to a lot of theater acts, and I really do like Boston art. Well, one of the things we're talking about with Nancy Levy right now, Levy, is that Nancy is a is a uh, career a career coach that helps yeah. artists and musicians and and people in 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 regular life to to manage their lives and to manage um, their businesses in in the in the correct way. That's what we're talking about now. But we have Elliot Herrera coming up in a couple of minutes, who's a musician in Rosendale. Oh, a musician. Yes, he's going to come on. We're going to talk a little bit about music and, and whatnot, and he's going to perform a little bit for you. So want, you should stay tuned. Okay. Okay, Gary? Thank you very much. Thank you for calling, Gary. I appreciate it. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's nice. We don't, we, we don't get a lot of calls in this hour. It's nice to get a couple of them like that, you know, because Great. people are either just getting home from work or... Well, they got Chet and Natalie on, you know. <laughs> well, it's a valuable service. It's yes, community. it is. It is community, and and people have, people have have learned about us, and that's it's good. Great. It's been doing pretty well. Um, what other? How long have you been doing this? I'm um, in my fourth year. Also, it's been a while. Yeah. That is a while for for coaching. It's a very new profession. Mm -hmm. I think there are people who who have found who created coaching for themselves. They've discovered it in a certain extent, to a certain extent and incorporated it into their consulting, for mm. example, or, yeah, mostly consultants have used coaching, coaching, coaching kind of uh, technology. Coaching, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm wondering why, why, why you call it coaching and not career counseling. Well, I don't work with people just around careers. Oh, okay. It's not just that. And there are people who have far more training in career coaching, career development kinds of skills where they have all these different kinds of assessments and they have contacts with different headhunters and they, they have a whole, really a whole package that they can offer. You know, kind of like, you know, what color is my parachute? Mm -hmm. Helping people figure out what it is that they want to do. What color is my parachute? My son-in-law my son just got one of the got it for his birthday the other day. Uh-huh. It's good I was coming through that. It is kind of it cool, is isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a lot of work. Do you have to, to climb over a bunch of stuff to get to your desk? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just had my office painted. <laughs> so for a little while, I was I boxed all my books and they were out in but the dining room. you can room. find everything. See, yeah. I can find everything. It's just don't send anybody in there to look for it. <laughs> Except you. Except, Except me. You. I, I know where it is. Uh -huh. and, uh, well, listen, if it works, if, it, if it's something that every time you walk around it or over it or buy it, right. it bothers you, then I'd suggest maybe oh, you need to do something yeah. with it. When you have to wear the construction boots to get in there, that's yeah. when it's time to yeah. maybe... And a jackhammer to <laughs> kind of blast through. <laughs> She's shaking her head, isn't she? She's smiling? Is she smiling over there? She's smiling, she yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put this up. What does PCC stand for? That uh, stands for uh, Professional Certified Coach. Oh, I was just oh so certified. you have to be... Oh, really? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's new. The, our professional association is, is relative, because it's such a new profession, uh -huh. our um, professional association is also relatively new, and they are become a credentialing body. So I was one of the first thousand people in the world to be certified. Congratulations. Thank you. That's pretty cool. I'm going to put this up here just for a second so that people can Thank you. write this down while we, while we pardon my back. I'm so sorry. I've got a, the things they do. Here's how you can get in touch with Nancy. And the telephone number there is uh, 1 888, right? That's 50 right. Coach. That's right. And uh, the website is www.biz coach.com. And um, that's how you can get in touch with Nancy. And um, I'm sure you can get in touch with her through um, 
who also gives too, because I'm going to link that up on uh, link you. his site up there. But is there anything else you want to get out that we haven't touched on? I just that's a great scarf you got on there. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Very arty. I like it's it a arty. lot. Oh, yeah, well, it's an art show. <laughs> I had to get arty. <laughs> Well, I thank you very much for coming thank in. Thank you. My you sit pleasure. Tight, you sit tight right there. I'm going to um, cue your VCRs up at home, gang, because I'm going to be putting on, uh, for a couple of minutes, for a minute here, our, our good night video for you to uh, take a look at while we get Elliot up here. Uh, I want you to take a look at this and enjoy it. We'll be with you back in just a couple of minutes. Thanks. Very good. Hi, Elliot. How you doing, Glenn? Good, and you? Nice to be here with you. Great to have you in here. So I don't like to right. have you. Elliot Herrera is the uh, is the keyboard player who played on that last video, and also he's the guitarist and uh, and and one of the singers in uh, in our band in uh, in our band, Casey Williams and Herrera, right? Wasn't that great to hear, Nancy? Uh, yeah. That was very I mean, interesting, isn't it? To I mean, know that there's um, that type of um, you know help yeah. and and 
coaching available is it's sure. just amazing. You know, for well, for us, it means a lot. You know, for sure musicians and for any other artists that you know, because it's um, I kind of define it like helping. She helps you find yourself yeah. and organize yourself. You know, like like she said, it's not it's not like uh, more career, but it's, it's she's working with spirit. You know, with with getting you. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's very important. And, and you got to have that together in order to move ahead. That's right. Yeah. yeah, it's great to know that there's somebody out there. And she's one of the best, though. I mean, obviously, you know, one of the first thousand to be certified. I'm going to get her card now. Uh, we, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's talk a little bit about music here. Okay. Um, did you have fun yesterday? Oh, Wandering around great. the streets it with Kurt? It was Kurt? great, yeah. Okay. We got a lot of horns uh, beeping at us. And <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. The video, know. and yeah. uh, we had the keyboard out, the guitars, the bass, yeah. in, the, in the playground, yeah. uh, and uh, people were saying, "What are they doing?" Yeah. <laughs> Sunday morning. What's going on over there? <laughs> but it was, it was a lot of fun, and we used the Conway Schoolyard in Rosendale, which was really nice. It had all yeah. that the kids art, the painting and stuff up yeah. on the walls. It was very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons I asked you on, Elliot, is because you have a recording studio that you. Uh, yes, that I you have. Work. Um, uh, Literally new recording studio, um, still in, in, a, in a baby yeah. uh, stage. It's a 16-track ADAT studio. You put some beautiful uh, stuff out there. Yeah, it's, it's great. I wish uh, you had some to listen to. Um, it's really small. It's in the basement of my house, and but um, it's great. We've been doing a lot of stuff there, some demos, and we did a demo um, with a salsa group in from Worcester. And we went to uh, New Jersey mm -hmm. to mix it, and it came out great. Yeah. Know? And it, the the room, my my studio is so small, you know, mostly like MIDI, MIDI programming and okay. some live, um, you know, instruments, guitar, vocals. Now and MIDI, MIDI. So our friends on Nancy Channel mm -hmm. Land will understand MIDI is is the computer it fires off the sound. It's already a pre-programmed sound. Yes. And uh, you can file you can file it onto the keyboard so that you'd have. Yeah. horns or strings or yeah. stuff like that that's right okay. you can um with today's technology you can program and um like a bass part like um, a piano part a and bass part a ba <laughs> 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 well nobody can program well. like you but uh yeah it's great I, I i don't have the room for like a, a big band yeah you anything, can't bring a band in, yeah, yeah but it's great we've been doing a lot of stuff uh that um uh it's, it's a hobby right now i'm you know working full time it's, it's tough sure, to get tough. it you know um but um I, uh, talking about this when we did this uh demo from this um group mm -hmm. from worcester and uh, it's a salsa band you know uh, big group. big salsa band and we went to new jersey to mix it and i'm sitting with the engineer and asking him and i'm asking him all sorts of questions you know how do you start uh wow you know what kind of equipment do you <laughs> have you know and the guy i says how did you start i asked him he says well I started this as a hobby 15 years ago, yeah. and it's now one of the most used studios in, in uh, New Jersey and yeah. New York. It's like, you know, great, great Latin artists have recorded there. And I'm saying, can you believe that? You know, like, you it's know, not like, as much like your yeah, now. like you know, a hobby, and all of a sudden, you know, it, you know, yeah. So that's when Nancy comes in and <laughs> helps you, you know, <laughs> puts the final touches. That's on right. You. Gets you ready. Yes. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah. So I've been. It's great. Um, it's. It's, it's nice and cozy. It's nice. We, we misfits. Uh, we, we did the vocals we down did in your some studio. vocals there. And yeah. I can't wait for that CD to come out. It's going to yeah. be real nice. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to its release too. Yeah. Um, what kind of music do you, uh, you? I know that you play all different kinds of music. You're a keyboard player, mm -hmm. um, pianist, I should say. You're a mm -hmm. pianist, and, and you're also a guitarist. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite? kind of music there because there's so many out well, there I mean I'm originally from Puerto Rico okay and I have that Spanish uh, Spanish, the spirit. Spanish blood yeah, in Spanish yeah. blood <laughs> in me I love um, uh, the guitar is obviously like you know Spanish you yes. know, it's, when you think of the classical guitar or the, uh, uh, you think of wow you know the Spanish you know yeah. I have that that ear for the Spanish guitar and I love the Latin music uh, Latin jazz oh yeah um, I love Latin jazz. As a matter of fact, Poncho Sanchez is coming next weekend. Okay. I go see him with my wife, and it's going to have a great time. Um, Tito Puente. Um, I, I play uh, I play some Latin jazz, and Casey Williams has introduced <laughs> me to rock. So it's <laughs> I was going to say, how did you great. get mixed up with a bunch like us? You know, it's, it's <laughs> great. Uh, Casey Williams and uh, Herrera, uh, like, 
you know, it's, it's great because, like you said uh, earlier, we were talking before the show, uh, we have incorporated so many influences, you know, yeah. my Latin influence, rock, and your ballads. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's so great when it comes together. That's a nice blend. Yeah, the mix, I think, is yeah. really what's... Uh, uh, it's kind of surprising because I've been in band, I've been in bands, and so I'm sure you have too, where, where it's, you know, we're going to play this kind of music, yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, and Tim and Tim, yourself and I have been able to bring to the table yeah. what we like. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. and I'll show up with a song, and, and, and it'll be completely, completely separate from what yeah. Tim would do. And then Tim would come up with Talk Talk or Misfits, which was a great yeah. song. Misfits. You yeah. know, and Misfits, comes out and, it's, and then you and I add what we add to it. Like the classical guitar on, on, know, Misfits. on Misfits. Yeah. It's like Tim approached me and says, um, I want to put a classical guitar here. <laughs> <laughs> and, but when we sat down, it worked. It, it was like, it wow. It it's amazing, really well. you know. It's like great, you know. So I'm happy to be a part of uh, K2. Oh, we're happy to have you. It's really, you? Uh, um, it's really opened another side of, of you know, of my mu uh, musical abilities that I, I didn't know I had, like rock. I never dreamed of playing, you know, a rock piano or anything. And it's just like, whoa, this is fun. It is. You know, it fun. It's, it's funny because when when Elliot first came over, when Tim brought Elliot over for the first time. Um, it was for him to play keyboards, and because mm -hmm. and, uh, we a lot of our music has these strings that come in, mm -hmm. and has this that comes in, and that you know the different kind of MIDI sounds that yeah. come come in, and um, my classical guitar was sitting there, and uh, we didn't know, we didn't realize that Elliot was mm -hmm. such an accomplished guitarist. Picks up my guitar and starts playing away. Well, I haven't played that guitar since. <laughs> no, I get out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, we kind of, our reaction was, boy, I can't believe this guy wants to play with us, but it has been a really good mix. Yeah. Well, you know, really well. uh, listening to Nancy, um, I'm going back to her because uh, it's really nice. I really like that uh, we have as musicians, uh, now, you, now that you say, um, I haven't touched that guitar, <laughs> this, I wish I could sit down and write a song. I wish I could sit down and the right lyrics like you do, you know? mm. and sometimes, like she mentioned, that as, as an artist, you have this things that are like breathing. It's like mm. they come so natural, mm. and you don't realize how valuable they are. I know, you know? and how lucky we are that we we're able to do something like, like that. Yes, and and like I, I said to myself, well, I, I can play, you know, I can uh, take a guitar and, and get some sound out of it, and and you can sit down and write, you know. Um, a, a song in minutes, and I go, oh my goodness, it's, it's amazing, you know, and th th that is what makes us so unique yeah. and so, you know, in, individuals with, and and one of the things that uh, she spoke about that I, I like was um, the um, learning that those things are valuable, right. and sometimes they come so natural to you that you just take them for granted. You, you know? Yeah, and exactly. and sometimes like when the coffee house was uh, in effect. I took you know, it for granted after a while, well, now it's gone. <laughs> well, they, they, Tim says, do you want to come down and play? They, I said, me? Play? Like, what? I've never done this before. Yeah. And then you do it and you say, wow. And you see the reaction of the people. Mm -hmm. You say, wow, you know, you have something to give to mm -hmm. somebody else. You know, you have something to give that you som sometimes you think, oh, nobody's going to listen to that. Right. You know, and it's see, one, one of the things that Elliot did was, he goes, well, I'll just come down and I'll just improvise yeah. a little bit. Oh, you got your guitar with you, don't you? Yes. Uh, Can you talk into playing just a little bit? Yeah, sure. Huh? Yeah. What do you think? Oops. You're not going to set over here, are you? <laughs> what kind of guitar? Now, tell us a little bit about what kind of guitar this is. Well, this guitar is by a great constructor. Um, his name is Stephen Kakos. And this uh, guitar used to belong to Eric Clue. It's a great uh, contemporary um, jazz guitar. Mm -hmm. And um, I went into the internet. Um, looking for a guitar, and a good friend of mine who's doing a doctor's degree in uh, Arizona has a guitar with, from the same constructor. And um, I, once I played it, I fell in love with it. I said, oh my God, I wish I could find one, you know. And went to the internet, found this website. Then uh, six months later, I had my Kakos guitar. You know? <laughs> it's like, it's so, it's great, you know, and uh, I love it. It's, um, just gonna improvise a little bit. Um, um, the good thing about improvisation is that it comes spontaneous and it comes from what you're feeling inside, you know. And um, I'm just going to improvise a little bit and see what happens. You know? <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thank that was you. beautiful. That was beautiful. That's all improv just uh, off the top of your head. Yes, yeah, just uh beautiful. Just like talking right now. Just <laughs> <laughs> we got a phone call. Dave's out there. I understand Dave's on the line. Hello, David. Hello. Hi, Dave. Hi, how are you? Great yourself. Thanks for calling. Uh, Eddie is your name? Yes. Eddie, that was tremendous. Thank you very much. Where can I see you perform? Uh well, it used to be at the uh, coffee house, and now that's closed, so uh, I'm not performing right now, Dave. Um, uh, you know, I don't have a local place that I perform, but, um, you know, sometimes uh, weddings, um, you know, it's really hard right now. Uh, I, I'm not a performer as far as, um, you know, going to, uh, uh, you know, like a club or... Yeah. But... Um, you know, we're, I'm involved with Casey Williams, um, Casey Williams Herrera right now, and um, okay. keep keep in touch with the show. Uh, we, we'll be performing a lot. We'll be performing a lot down. We perform a lot down the square down there. Some of the summer yeah. concerts and stuff. Okay. And we'll also be once the once the CD is released, we're gonna be picking up a bunch of shows then too. Yeah. Okay. Well, if I ever do get married a second time, I will look you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tremendous, Eddie. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Dave. We appreciate Bye. it. Thank you, Eddie. That was great. Elliot, yeah. uh, they're yelling at me. They're waving in the other room, telling me that we're out of time. Oh, man. huh? I went by fast, didn't huh? it? Yeah. Eddie, thanks a lot, brother. Thank I you, appreciate Glenn. It's been a pleasure. It. Dynamite, dynamite. Thank dynamite. you very much. You know how I feel. Mm -hmm. Nancy, thank you very much. It was a very nice show. We appreciate you coming in. Listen, folks, try and do something artful for yourself this week, even if it's just sitting down listening to some beautiful music or or getting out to the galleries and checking some stuff out. Be safe, and we'll see you next week. Okay? Bye bye now.